Hello and thank you for watching Kaluna Creations. My name's Heather and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make yourself a fabric in tray. Now unfortunately I haven't got one of these to hand to show you because I've sold them all but I have got its baby brother which is this except our version that we're making today is going to be A4 sized. Now the good thing about this is it is you don't have to have it folded down. You go fold the top up to make it taller. So it looks more like this now. Ooh, lovely. Or it's also reversible. So you can just turn it out the other way. say with great ease <laughs> and now it looks like this Ta -da! and now we've got a completely different looking box <laughs> so if you do really love this box the baby brother you can get it on my website um, there's a link to the web address um, in the description below so you can always pop on there if you do want this particular one Right, so any equipment that you're going to be needing is on a separate video, um, which is just a, a little link up here. Um, but if you have already watched that, then you're happy to know that you don't need anything extra on this one. Everything that is in that one video is what you're going to need for this project. All right. So if you want to keep watching, I will let you know what fabric measurements you're going to be needing. So the first piece of fabric is the shorter side of your box on the outer part. Now this is 26 centimeters this way by 12 centimeters this way. And we've got two of these for the outer and we've also got two of these for your lining. Like so. The next one is for the longer part. Now this is 35 centimeters this way by 12 centimeters this way. And again, we've got two for your outside. And then we've got two for your inside. also need a base so this is 25 centimeters this way by 26 centimeters this way and we need two of these now I've chosen to do them both in the blue fabric but what you can do is have one in the blue and one in the wood or anything to match whatever colors you've got on your outer or you can just have whatever colour you fancy. Now, for the interfacing, you don't want to go quite as tall as your other pieces of fabric. So we've got it the same length, it's still 26 centimetres this way, but we've got 10 centimetres going this way. So it's not going to quite reach the top. Now that's on purpose so that it won't get all snagged up when we're doing all the top stitching and we need four of those and then we've got 35 centimeters this way by 10 centimeters this way to do the interfacing on your longer sides and again we've got four of those and that's everything you're going to need. Now this can be a little bit confusing so I'm going to go through it really slowly with you. So firstly we're going to need one of our base pieces and then we're going to need one of our longer sides. So I've gone for the wood one to start with. Line it up there and then we're also going to need 
one of our interfacing pieces and pop that on top. Now it's up to you, if you do have the already made um, interfacing, your medium weight interfacing, you can choose to iron this on just to keep it in place. Now I find actually it's not necessary to iron it if you're not using the actual interfacing, you're just using scrap fabric instead. So what I tend to do is just leave it loose and use some clips to hold it all in place whilst you take it across to your sewing machine. Like so. That way we're going to just sew all the way along here, going forwards, backwards at the front and at the end. But what we want to do is leave a bit of a gap here we want to leave about five millimeters before we start stitching and we want to leave about five millimeters away from this edge as well when we stop. So we're only gonna sew from this point here along to this point here, leaving a gap both ends. And that'll make a lot more sense when we go on to the next page, why we've left that gap. So I'm gonna go take this across to the sewing machine put that line of stitching in and then I'm going to show you what to do next. Right, I've got my line of stitching in and as you can see I've left the first bit and the last bit free and now I will show you why because we're going to put in our second side now so flip this part out of your way, pop your outer material again, the shorter piece this time, on there, then grab your piece of interfacing, if you haven't ironed it on that is, if you have ironed it on then obviously it'll be attached already, and just line it up there, pop your clips on, Helps if I grab the right size, just to hold it all together so it doesn't start trying to go anywhere whilst you're sewing. And then I'm just going to show you on this edge. So we're going to start here again, so leave your gap, start here, sew your presser foot width all the way along here, but then when you get to this edge what I want you to do is stop when you meet this piece of fabric here. So it'll be just there. Now that means if I put the clips there instead, so that's gonna be my fake seam here. So I've sewn up to there, let's pretend. It means that when we come to sew this edge, we'll have a lovely neat edge going on here. That'll make a lot more sense once I've got to it. Now I'm going to pop this one on and then I'm going to carry on that process, layering up and sewing on, layer up, sew on, and then I'll show you how to do the side seams. Right, so we've got our outer piece here with all four sides attached. So the next stage is to sew up the side so it makes a box shape. Now to do this, the easiest way I've found is to actually fold the fabric itself on itself. So bring this corner up to here and you'll see like a triangle of the base. And that just means now I've got the one side here the one side here and they simply flap down and meet each other nicely. Now just so that they don't move whilst we go across to the sewing machine, probably easiest just to clip it again like that. And what we're going to do is sew up this side remembering to go forward and backwards 
from the start and the finish. And we're gonna do that to all of the sides. So up this one, up the other one, up the fourth one. You will find you won't be able to fold it quite so easily on those last couple, but these first two should be nice and easy. And then we need to get onto our lining. So here we have it. We've got all our seams in place on the sides. Now it doesn't really want to stand up at the moment just because we have only got one layer on rather than the lining as well. That'll help hold it up. Plus, once we roll over the side, that gives it an extra stability too. So what we need to do now is do exactly the same with the lining as we have with this one here. So I'll put that to one side for now. So we get our other base piece. This time we're going to use the long side of our lining fabric. So it's the blue facing inwards with the interfacing along there. So your nice seam, remembering to Keep that little gap either side, then just go round doing all of them the same way that you did the other one and then I will show you how you sew them all together. And here we have it, our lining piece made in exactly the same way as our outer. Now before we attach them together a little thing that we like to do just so that it makes it a little less bulky in the corners is just chop the extra fabric that we don't need just off in these corners so just go don't go too close to the actual sewing because obviously you don't want that all unraveling and then same again on this one And the other one. And same on this one. Let's try and get all these threads at the same time. Like that. I used to do the same with the outer piece. So just go around. our sides what we need to do is turn one of these inside out it doesn't matter which I'm going to do my lining inside out and pop one inside the other Now because we've done the fabric exactly the same size and all of the seam allowances exactly the same size, they should fit quite nicely within each other. Now if your sewing machine has decided to go off on a little merry-go-round, then um, you might find they might not fit quite the same, but they should be fairly close. So what you need to do now is find the seam of the outer and the seam of the inner pinch them together and just spread out the seam on both ones and clip it like so. I'll show you again on this side. So we've got the outside seam, we've got the lining seam, pinch them together, spread out there extra bits and clip it together. 
Now you've got two, you can just pull them tight, just make sure they are fitting, which they do, which is fab. Do the other two corners. Didn't take long, so I'll do it now. So, spreading them out. This one's a bit more fiddly. The lining is not wanting to spread its little wings. Last one. Spin it out. Spin it out. And clip. There. Lovely. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is starting on this side. So all the way around, down the short side, down this other side, down this other side, and then along to about here. So we'll start here, finish here, and obviously when you start and finish, you always go forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. And then we'll be able to pop our hand in that gap there and pull it through. Right, so I've sewn all the way around, joining the lining to the outer and left my little hole here. So all I need to do now is pull it inside out. So we've got to turn this inside out. So pop your hand in the hole that you left, pop it in, shove your hand right to the end, give it a grab and just pull it out like so. And if you just keep pulling, try not to be too rough around the edges just because we don't want to pop any seams. Now I'm being more gentle than normal just because I don't want it to suddenly rip whilst on camera. And there we go. So, just go around the edge then, poking out every corner, like that. And the next corner, like that. And the next one. And that's all four corners done. And then we just need to fold the lining back inside the box, like that. So just give it a bit of a tap. If you grab the corner itself, tap it inside, like that. Just do that on all four corners. Last one. Like that. And there we have a rather cool little fabric in tray. Ta-da! <laughs> now as you can see we've still got a bit of a hole going on here so what we need to do is sew that shut and how we do that is take it all to the sewing, mach sewing machine ironing board <laughs> and we're going to iron along that bit there if you iron all the way around all the edges because we're going to top stitch this whole lot make it nice and neat now you can choose to do that in a contrasting colour. I will probably use white just because I like it standing out. Um, but you can also choose a colour that's going to match the um, fabric itself if you're not feeling overly confident and you don't really want it showing perhaps. Um, so yes, I'm going to go off and iron all these sides down, put the top stitching on and then bring it back. We're almost done. So we've got all our top stitching all around the edge. So that has closed up that hole. It's not gonna open up again now. But we are left with some dangly strings that we don't really want to have dangling there. So to tidy them up, 
all you need to do is give the string a bit of a tug and then get your needle put your needle into that loop and pull it through so now we've just got one thread on the one side and three on the other so after I give the other side a little tug to bring through that loop put your needle in and pull it through so now we've got all four threads from the start and finish on the one side and none on the other so all we need to do now is just knot this and then we'll thread all four of these seams into the lining so that nobody will see them now to save you watching me trying to knot the threads and taking a while um, I've just skipped ahead a little bit so I've knotted the four threads together and then I've threaded them through my needle and what I've done is literally just go into the bag lining fabric and then out the other side so that when I tug it it'll drag all those threads through and give it a little bit more of a tug because a few of them have decided to stay put. That one. That one. Lovely. So now it means that all of these threads there we go. That bet knot is barely noticeable now. And we'll trim these and the pair of scissors. And there we go. It's nice and neat, you don't get any of those pokey little bits out then. And there you have it. You've got your own fabric in tray. There. <laughs> a little bit big for this screen, eh? Now, what I like to do with these is just fold over the top just a little bit just so you get that flash of blue you don't have to it's just a personal preference and then it looks more like One fabric in tray. I'll make all your paperwork look far neater now. Now if you do really really love this particular one with the wooden sides and the blue bottom or if actually you really liked the original one that I showed you at the start with the, the wood and the green. Both of them are available on my website I'll put a link to my web address in the description. Um, all the prices that are on there, 50% of those prices does go to charity. Um, so you're doing a bit of good at the same time as getting something funky. I hope you really enjoyed doing this tutorial and you're pleased with the results. If there were any parts of it that you find that you struggled with or you'd like a little bit of extra help, then please pop in the comments and I'll try my best to keep on top of those and like help you out where I can. Um, or if there is something else that you'd quite like to learn how to make that you can't find, then yeah, please pop that in there too. If I know how to do it, then yes, I will certainly do a tutorial for you on those. Now, if you did enjoy this video, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, that'd be fantastic. That way, every time I pop on a new tutorial, you'll get a notification and hopefully it'll inspire you to try something new. Thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Bye.